and next up is a community talk, of course, also on open source. <laughs> and I have uh, two experts in here to talk more about open source. So talk is about simplifying cloud integration in an IDE with Gradle plugin. And I welcome Daniel Gravinson, SAP integration expert, and Marina Pontiakova, uh, SAP Analytics Manager. So great to have you here, Marina. Great uh, to say hello to Daniel. Uh, community talk. So I basically throw it over to you, Marina. You prepped a lot of questions for Daniel and looking forward to a great discussion here. Hi, Thomas. Thank you very much. I see that atmosphere and energy in the studio <laughs> this morning is just great. <laughs> so yeah, my name is Marina. And I'm super excited because today I will be interviewing Daniel Graverson about the SCP Cloud Platform Integration Topic Simplification. So Daniel, hi. Uh, tell us more about yourself first. Hi, and, and hi, uh, thanks for, for having me here on, on this, uh, this show, what you call it. <laughs> Take it. Um, yeah, so my name is, is Daniel Graverson. I've been working with SAP Integration since it was XI30. And then just kept on going, and it seems like it has been evolving. And at least you also at this ticket, there has been quite a lot of news about integration, what's going on, and uh, it's really exciting to see what's what's happening in this uh, this space. Um, so one of the things that in this process that I've been working on when when working with integration, I've always been curious about how I could actually improve the way people were doing is integration what what were the the gaps that i could fill in with small tool processes in place to to simplify the process uh, to make it easier for for people to deliver sap integration and that's the one of the the topics for today uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that 90% of the people who joined uh, this session already know what is SCP integration suite, but maybe for this 10% who's left <laughs> and just um, joined by curiosity, maybe you can just uh, tell a couple of the sentences about like overall SCP CPI and what it's all about. So SAP Cloud Integration Suite is SAP's um, iPaaS solution. It's a cloud-based solution to make it easier for customers to in, uh, integrate things. So we all know that the challenges about having multiple systems that needs to connect to each other in a simple way. And this iPad solution, uh, Cloud Integration Suite, is able to do that. And it contains a lot of uh, functionality, both for, for processor or integration, API explosions and stuff like that. So it's all in one package solution. I also heard that right now uh, it's quite fit to the ACP strategy. Right? <laughs> yes, and obviously they, they come with uh, SAP needs to do integration right. Uh, and that's what we have been hearing the whole uh, call, uh, show uh, session. And there is definitely a lot of things in this uh, product. There's a lot of pre delivered integrations that come that make it easier for customers to integrate their products uh, much faster. Okay, and you made a Gradle plugin, right? So <laughs> what this plugin is about and how we can use it? So, so the idea is that once you're developing SAP integration, uh, you have two ways of, of delivering it. So whenever you are developing an SAP integration, it contains of, of two ways or two workflows, if you call it like that. So one is that you define a process that in a PPM and model where you said, take the message, process it, send it to over here, handle it in this way. And it is really yeah, simple. It, it, it has the functionality that you need uh, to do a lot of workflow or handling messages and stuff like that. And then the other thing is that for some, some processes and steps, you need to um, improve the, the functionality, uh, make custom code. And this is the place where you actually have to, to use an 
so the the normal way would be to use XSLT or uh, Groovy script, which is the, the an enhancement of Java uh, framework or Java, where you can actually script a lot of all these frameworks about how do we map things and stuff like that. And these two things is sometimes a little challenging because when you're developing the, the Gradle plugins, you need to, the, the editor built in in CPI is, is not flexible enough, doesn't have the, the capabilities that you want as a developer. Um, and most people will then copy it either there's an open, well, a, a service that you can use to, to edit these query scripts in and try it out, or they will have it in a Git repository and then they will do some manual synchronization behind between these two things. And these were one of the, the, the challenges that we wanted to, to solve to make it easier for customers so they could seamlessly switch between the ID and, and the, the editor depending on what, what kind of uh, artifacts they wanted to change and what were the processes in place. That basically sounds extremely engaging, but uh, tell me more how I can get started with it because you know what? Uh, I really want to try it myself. Thanks. Yeah, so so I've posted a blog uh, on the topic uh, or on on this topic. It's called, uh, if you search for SAP uh, CM 104, which is the same name of the session, you should be able to find it. And there, there's all the different resources about all the, 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 the all the, the key repositories that you need. What are, what are the configurations that you need to do uh, to do this? And obviously, so one of the things we, we do support both CPI, which is the cloud integration suite, and we support API management, where you also have from time to time this saying that the, the built-in editor is not enough, and you may want to make use of a better editor to handle some of these things and, and do custom edits uh, in it and there it also makes a lot of sense. So if you go to the blog, there is yeah, the description on how you set it up. Um, so one of the things that we have been doing for the last five years or so is to first we created a PI testing tool, then we found out that customers are also going to use CPI. We added the capability there, uh, being able to test iFlows uh, simply. And then from that, we actually also, um, we had to do versioning of these objects. So we found a way that it would synchronize the, the iFlow that would change. And then once we had that, we could actually push it into a Git repository. And that means it's, if you use our the FIGAF tool to, to push data into this Git repository, it's really simple to set it. So I've created a video where it's like, take like 20 minutes to try to install or to install it synchronize it with your PI system, deliver it into a Git repository and configure this Git repository with all the required artifacts. So there is like three different uh, artifacts that you need as a part of this, and it just built it all, and then you can go around edit it. And obviously, most developers would be using some Git repository to do uh, development in because that's where things is going right now that Git is, the place to go and that's why we thought it's the best approach to move the users into a Git repository, give them all, all give them access uh, without having to figure out too much stuff. So we, yeah, as a part of this is about simplifying the process that developers need to go through uh, in order for, for you to set this up. So it's an open source, right? Yes. So. When, when we were doing this, obviously we have our product that's to, to, to simplify most of the processes. But when we were dealing with these things, it was like, okay, it's really difficult to license these things. Uh, and it was like, okay, so how would you actually monetize these things? And my idea was it was much better just to get people to use these plugins. And then hopefully once they started to use them, they could also see some of the benefits that our FIGAP tool could, could give to their processes. Um, and obviously we also get uh, 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 incident or what do you call tickets and uh, from, from time to time with people that say, hey, how about supporting these other things? So one right. of the things we, right. we changed was also to support value mappings, which is a part of this. So 
uh, it we try to 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 follow the the community and helping out in in this way that sounds very cool because i really want to try it myself maybe then you know the last question um do you have any further steps any further ideas what you want to do next so so obviously there's uh, been a lot here at, at Ticket and we obviously need to figure out how, how all of these things work together with our plugin and our tool and how these, these things work uh, in, in a good way. Um, so one, yeah, I guess one of the other plugins we also have is, is a way that also from your IDE without leaving it, you can also do testing of the iFlow. So you can both develop, change the Groovy script, and then you can actually call testing script. So, so all of that would be kind of integrated into the same development process that, that developers are needing. Um, the other thing is that a couple of weeks ago, we, yeah, so whenever we're talking about uh, DevOps and um, what's going on in that space, a lot of customers always ask, so yeah, we have this HR DevOps and that's, I don't know if there's some kind of an KPI or something like that for all the customers, like we want to do this uh, also and figure out how do we, we deliver um, integration via HR DevOps. And we did a proof of concept where we could actually use both the Git repository that we already created uh, with, with the tooling and also actually deploy these Gradle plugins in Azure DevOps or whatever in, in these uh, scripts that you, you create. And with that, it was actually possible to, to run these, uh, run all the, all the flows um, from it. So you could take a uh, commit and make a pull request of, of an iFlow. And then once you, you merge it, it was possible to create builds and then deploy it along the pipeline. Um, I th there's, there's, so some of the, the gaps in that process is that the, the way we are developing CPI and even with our plugins, it's not really where you would be if you're developing um, Fiora, UFI, Java application because you don't really have a local place where you can deploy things in and you can try it out. And once you commit it, it can be built and processed along the way. You just have your three or four years uh, then landscape that you're, you're using. And that's one of the things we would like to figure out. How do we actually make this process a little better? What's the, what is it that we, we can add of functionality to, to this to make it easier for, for customers to, to, to get started and try it out and, and leverage uh, these functionalities. I already checked your link. So I Google our session number in the, so type in this Google number. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I saw your, <laughs> I saw your blog. Uh, so guys, everyone who is watching us, check it as well. And thank you very much, Daniel. That was a very interesting topic. So then let's hand back to Thomas now. Thanks. Okay, perfect. So thank you so much, Marina, Daniel. This was great. And I also have to check it out. I haven't had too much time lately, but I think there's a lot of things for us to do. So um, great. Uh, the blog everybody can find, hopefully. Just yeah, do the Google search. I blog think most post. people will be able to do that. Okay, it's blog post. I just got the yeah. reminder. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good. Now, thank you, you so much. Cool. You can also Google uh, it by Daniel Graver's name and just put ACP in the end, in, and then you will uh, find his um, account on the people.acp.com. Perfect. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.